Hey guys, what's up here? I'm the Crazy Kid Chemist, and today, we're gonna make some sulfurous acid. Okay then, here are the ingredients for today's experiment. We will need a bottle of sulfur, a measuring spoon, and last but not least, we will need an Erlenmeyer flask filled with 10 milliliters of water. What? what wait a sec! Who broke my measuring spoon? JK, I did it on purpose. But why did I bend one end of the spoon at a 90 degree angle? Because then I could heat the sulfur over an open flame. Oh, and I nearly forgot. We will need our lid opener to open the sulfur bottle. Now let's get on to the experiment, shall we? So first up, I opened a bottle of sulfur and scooped up one small spoon of the powdery yellowish substance. After that, I heated the sulfur over an open flame. That's why I bent the spoon. And as you can see, sulfur burns a bright blue. If the measuring spoon becomes too hot to handle, clamp it on a test tube holder that is made out of wood, as shown here. Burn, baby, burn! Next up, I dipped the hot spoon into the Erlenmeyer flask, but I also made sure that the spoon didn't touch the water. Otherwise, the sulfur would stop burning. Wow, look at that fog. But what's actually happening is that the water is mixing with the sulfur dioxide to create sulfurous acid. Look at the formula below. You see the H2O, that's water, while the SO2 is sulfur dioxide. When you add the two chemicals together, you get H2SO3, also called sulfurous acid. I held the spoon in the flask for a couple minutes to make sure that all the sulfur dioxide will mix with the water. So there you have it folks, your homemade sulfurous acid. If you want to, you could dip a strip of blue limbus paper into the solution. It will turn red due to the fact that this is an acid. Did you know that this liquid can actually be used as a disinfectant in skin diseases or as a reducing agent? a substance which oxidizes other substances in chemical reactions. Oxidizing is extremely important because without oxidizing, we wouldn't even exist in this world. Let me give you an example, potassium chloride. It's an oxidized compound. So when potassium bonds with chlorine, it loses its electron to the chlorine atom, or it oxidizes its electron to the chlorine atom. Did you know that potassium chloride is actually used to treat people with low blood levels of potassium? When you make compounds, you make up the everyday substances. For example, paper, which sulfurous acid is found in. Sulfurous acid can also be used to preserve fruits, nuts, wines, and other food. Furthermore, sulfurous acid can be used to bleach straw and textiles. Textile is a type of cloth. Now, I want to talk a little bit about sulfuric acid and sulfurous acid. Oh boy, can you imagine how fun it would be to work with sulfuric acid? For the following two pictures, Use the key below. The difference between sulfurous acid and sulfuric acid is that the sulfurous acid has one less oxygen atom than the sulfuric acid molecule. Sulfuric acid is mainly used in the production of fertilizers. Pretty interesting. And a cool chemi fact. Now you may think sulfuric acid is really hard to make. Well, it's not that hard actually. You only need water and sulfur trioxide. Sulfur trioxide can be made by making sulfur dioxide gas react with an oxygen torch. Then we could put the sulfur trioxide in the water. 
That's it for this episode, and thanks for watching. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Kemi!